Hi. In one of the previous videos, uh, we discussed the homeostasis, maintaining the constancy or stability in the Milo interior. Every functioning system in the body has this one goal with one aim the system is functioning to maintain this constancy in the Milo interior, to maintain the stability uh, in the Milo surrounding the cells. Each system has this one goal in mind as it functions that the Milo needs to be kept constant. If there is a disturbance in the Milo, then that disturbance should be negated, the change should be cancelled out and each parameter should be brought back to the normalcy uh, or to its normal set point. So um, that's the concept of homeostasis. Now homeostatic regulatory mechanisms, they are all functioning for this one aim, but how efficiently are they performing it? For instance, let's, let's take uh, various parameters, pH. Uh, if the pH is altered, the cells uh, would not be able to function perform uh, 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 function normally, perform their functions normally. Uh, the enzymes uh, inside the cells uh, would would behave in an erratic manner. Or uh, let's say osmolarity. If it is disturbed, then the water will either move into the cell or out of the cells. The cell size will change. Temperature again, uh, enzymes will not be able to function normally. So each of these parameters are very, very tightly controlled, very, very uh, nicely regulated. But the point is, how efficiently are these parameters controlled? How, what is the efficiency of a negative feedback mechanism or a homeostatic regulatory mechanism? That efficiency is quantified in terms of gain of a negative feedback mechanism or a homeostatic regulatory mechanism. It's the quantification of the efficiency of homeostatic regulatory mechanisms. And this gain, this is not uh, used in the way we use it normally, this term, what's the gain? Gain is the quantification, measuring the efficiency of a homeostatic regulatory mechanism. And the gain is equal to correction applied by the homeostatic regulatory mechanism upon residual error. That's the definition of gain. Let's try to understand this. Let's say blood pressure. Blood pressure uh, has a certain set point as all the parameters have a certain set point and the homeostatic regulatory mechanisms they see to it that whenever the uh, parameter is changed whenever there is disturbance it is brought back towards its original set point so in the case of blood pressure same thing will happen if the blood pressure is increased it is brought back to 100 if the blood pressure decreases it is brought back to 100 now the only question is whether it comes all the way back to 100 or whether some deviation remains. I mean, if the blood pressure increases to, let's say, 180, it will be brought back towards 100. If it exactly comes back to 100 or uh, let's say if it comes to 110 from 180 back to 110, that means there will be some error left. And that decides um, the efficiency of uh, a negative feedback mechanism, how much efficiently it brings this correction as close uh, to the original set point as possible. So let's take the example and understand this concept of gain. BP has a set point of 100 mm of Hg. Now, if a person is performing the exercise and the BP was changed, the BP increases to 150 mm of Hg. A change has occurred. We are assuming here that uh, the, we are talking about the baroreceptor system. 
and we are trying to understand the efficiency of the baroreceptor mechanism. If there was no baroreceptors functioning at all and the BP increases to 150 mm of Hg. Now let us assume that the baroreceptor system is the BP controlling mechanism, the BP regulating system. In the presence of baroreceptor mechanism, the BP changes only to 110 mm of Hg. Remember, the person is performing exercise, the BP is expected to rise to 150 mm of Hg. But because the baroreceptors are very efficient BP regulatory mechanism, the BP uh, is uh, increasing only up to 110 mm of Hg. It means that the BP regulation by the baroreceptor mechanism is that it has made a correction of 40 mm of Hg. Look, if the baroreceptors were not functioning, the BP would have risen all the way to 150. But because the baroreceptors are functioning, uh, they are very efficiently regulating the mechanism. So, BP increased only up to 110. That means they have made a correction of 40 mm of Hg. But, there is still some error. You know, the BP should not, should not have got altered at all. It should have been kept absolutely constant at the set point. That's not the case. The BP did change and it increased up to 110 mm of Hg. So, from the set point, it has got deviated and uh, the error is in this example, as you can see, the error is 10 mm of Hg. The finally, uh, BP deviated and it became 110 mm of Hg. So, residual error is 10. And therefore, in this example, correction applied by the baroreceptor system is 40 mm of Hg and residual error is 10 mm of Hg. Therefore, the gain of this particular mechanism is plus 4. Plus or minus sign indicates uh, it does not quantify this particular uh, or any particular parameter. It only indicates to which side um, of the controlled variable uh, the regulation has been done. So, it does not uh, signif signify any quantity as such. Well, so this is the gain of this particular example. Now, um, so in simpler words, let me just put it simply. The BP was 100 mm of Hg. It increases to 150 mm of Hg. Baroreceptor system makes the correction and brings it back to towards the original set point. But it has not come back all the way to 100, which is the normal set point and which is necessary for the normal functioning um, of the cells. So, correction was applied and it was of 40 mm of Hg from 150 to 110 and there is still some residual error that is remaining that is uh, a 10 mm of Hg. Therefore, 40 upon 10, 4 is the gain uh, of this uh, baroreceptor system or this particular example. That is the concept of uh, efficiency of a negative feedback mechanism or efficiency of a homeostatic regulatory mechanism. Now, the most important point, higher the gain, more efficient is the system. Higher the gain, more efficient is the homeostatic regulatory mechanism. Because, obviously, higher the gain means correction applied will be large and residual error will be small. So, that, uh, that deviation, that error that stays, if it is small and the correction applied is very large, that means there is the high gain and higher the gain, 
more efficient is the system which is obviously the case i mean system is very efficient that therefore it brings the variable back to its original set point as closest as possible it leaves very small error and the correction applied is very very large that is the efficiency of a negative feedback mechanism and uh, th that's how it is measured uh, so let's see some of the systems with higher gains it is said that uh, kidney body fluids mechanism in the regulation of blood pressure this system is said to have infinite gain what is the meaning of infinite gain zero error infinite gain you see uh, the, the gain is correction upon a residual error and infinite gain means zero error and that means it's the among the most efficient regulatory mechanisms in the body so um, that's one or among the highest gains temperature regulation you know uh, temperature has to be kept constant for all the enzymatic machinery of the cell to work perfectly in order temperature regulating system is also among the most efficient mechanisms the temperature regulating system has got a gain of 33 that's a high gain now among the lower gains baroreceptor system baroreceptor mechanism is uh, in the bp regulation has got a gain of only about 2 2 to 4 so that's not a very high gain these are the majors of efficiency of the uh, various uh, homeostatic regulatory mechanisms let me just add uh, but in summary of course is that higher the gain more efficient the system that means uh, it makes a large correction but leaves a very small error after the deviation had occurred let me make a uh, a few points first oscillations in the system oscillations in the system the systems with a very high gain they would oscillate let's take an example uh, pupillary light reflex if you have ever seen the pupillary light reflex properly you may note it next time when you go to the wards throw the torch light in the eyes what you see is pupils constrict now this is a correction applied by the system um, correction for what the light entry into the eye and falling on the retina needs to be restricted so pupil constrict and they restrict the amount of light entering the eye uh, change had occurred and that change was negated but next time if you see the uh, see that in the ward pupils constrict but it does not stop there pupils constrict dilate constrict dilate constrict dilate and finally go into a constricted state which is best for that amount of light so the system oscillated for a while before finally going to a uh, going at a particular point particular set point so that means the system oscillated system show oscillations um, first thing all the ans regulated systems they show oscillations during correction why because uh, the branches of ans the sympathetic and parasympathetic branches while they are making the correction they are trying to balance out each other and in that there are oscillations so all the ans regulated mechanisms uh, will sh exhibit some kind of oscillations before they settle down to a particular set point and the second um, thing that leads to oscillations is the systems with very high gain they would tend to oscillate during correction systems with a very high gain means very high 
correction as we have seen from the formula. Let's try to understand this. Let's say the BP is 100 mm of Hg and I am just simplifying uh, the mechanism, simplifying the example. Let's say the, the set point is 100 mm of Hg and it has changed to 150 mm of Hg. And now let us assume that this system has got a very high gain, means very high correction. Now what happens is, during the correction, because it's got a very high correction, during correction, the system tends to overshoot. The system tends to overshoot during correction. That it does not stop at the original set point. It has got a very high gain and a very high correction. And therefore, uh, the system went to the other side of the set point. Let's say the BP was uh, brought back to not 100, but it was brought to 90 mm of Hg. And then system has to auto correct itself. There has to be correction again. So what will happen is basically again the BP will be corrected because it is still deviation. Uh, so 110, again it will correct itself. 94, 106. So BP will oscillate for a while before settling down to a value near the set point. System oscillated around a value and finally reached a particular set point, a particular value which is near the set point. So that is how a system will oscillate before settling down uh, while making the correction. And as I said, systems very high gain, means systems with a very high efficiency, they tend to oscillate like this. Another form of oscillation is uh, that oscillations in the set point and oscillations in the gain. Oscillations in the set point and therefore oscillations in the gain. In these systems, set point itself is not fixed. I mean, we saw the examples in which the set point is a fixed value whether it's pH, temperature, osmolarity and so on. But in certain systems, the set point itself is not fixed. Example, muscle spindle. In regulation of muscle length during a continuous voluntary movement. That's an example of oscillatory set point and therefore oscillatory gain uh, during a continuous voluntary movement. Now in this example, you know, when we, we, we make a movement, the muscle length is continuously changing and that changing length is detected by the muscle spindle. It sends signal back to the cerebellum. Cerebellum then accordingly sends the signal back and adjusts the muscle length, adjusts the muscle contraction. How much is needed further to make the movement? That is again sensed by the muscle spindle and again it is sent back to the cerebellum and again the cerebellum will make the adjustment in the muscle contraction. So there is no one fixed set point for, uh, towards which the muscle spindle is working. It's continuously changing. It's a shifting goalpost in a sense uh, and therefore there are oscillations in the set point, changes in the set point, changes in the gain, oscillations in the gain. Such mechanisms have been described as servo mechanisms, where the, uh, where the set point keeps on oscillating. So that uh, is about the efficiency of uh, homeostatic regulatory mechanisms and uh, how do we measure it, how do we quantify it.